Are you kidding me? Nobody, what are you doing? What are you saying? Huh? Why are Melee getting more mobility? Like way more. Why? I don't understand. What are we saying? Ladies and gentlemen, we got some brand new hero talents coming in. Hot off the printing press. And we have some that I've been waiting for. Much anticipated. The Arcane Frost Spell Slinger is just one of what we're going to be looking at here today. We've got the Pack Leader, which is Beast Mastery Hunter, Survival Hunter, the Flame Shaper, Devastation, Preservation, Druid of the Claw, Feral and Guardian Druid. Are you kidding me, bro? Demon Hunter, Al Draki Reaver. I mean, that just sounds absolutely wild. But yeah, without further ado, I do want to take a look at the one that I care about the most. We'll be going through each and every one of these, but I want to take a quick little look at the Spell Slinger because that is by far the one that interests me the most as a mage main. Okay. Okay, developer's notes. The Spell Slinger Splinters Splinters are themed and tuned based on your active specialization. Arcane Splinters are named Arcane Splinters and Moderate Arcane School Damage and deal Moderate Arcane School Damage. Frost Splinters are named Frost Splinters and deal Light Frost School Damage. Those spe uh, specifics have been omitted from this mocking uh, mock-up for the sake of the tooltip readability. As most spec Splinters serve the same purpose. Okay, Spell Slinger. Splintering Sorcery. When you consume Nether Precision, conjure a splinter that fires at your target. Okay. Frost. When you consume Winter's Chill, consume or conjure a splinter that fires at your target. I'm not going to lie. I immediately think I already have icicles. I already have icicles. What the hell is a splinter? That's the first thing that's going through my mind. I have icicles. Why do I need splinters? Let's find out. Uh, splinter. Conjure raw magic into a sharp projectile that deals damage. Splinters embed themselves into the target, dealing additional damage over 16 seconds. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's back it up right here. It's a dot. Okay, so we get a dot as a spell slinger. Uh, augury uh, abounds. Okay. Casting Arcane Surge conjures eight splinters, dealing arcane... During Arcane Surge, whenever you conjure a splinter, you have a 100% chance to conjure an additional splinter. Casting Icy Veins conjures eight splinters. During Icy Veins, whenever you conjure a splinter, you have a 100% chance. So, like, immediately I'm just thinking, okay, just more passive damage. Just more passive automatic damage. Controlled Instincts. Uh, while a target is under the effects of Winter's Chill, 20% of the direct damage dealt by a splinter is also dealt to a nearby enemy. Damage reduced beyond five targets. What? While a target is under the effects of Winter's Chill, 20% of the direct damage is also dealt more passive AoE. Okay. Uh, splintering orbs. So, so far, everything we've read is just a passive. I'm just going to read these from the Frost point of view. I think it makes more sense for you guys and as well as myself. I'm just going to read it from the Frost point of view for now. The first eight times an enemy is damaged by your frozen orb, you conjure a splinter that fires at the damaged target. Frozen orb damage is increased by 10%. Okay. Let's keep going. Slippery slinging. These are, those are the first choice node. You have 40% increased movement speed during alter time. Look again. Displacement has a 50% longer duration, 25% longer range, and leaves behind a mirror image. Okay. I think that one I like more. 50% longer duration on displacement, 25% longer range on displacement, and leaves behind a mirror image. I'll probably go with that. Reactive barrier. Your prismatic barrier or ice barrier can absorb up to 50% more damage based on your missing health. Max effectiveness when used under 50% health. So your ice barrier is stronger when you're low health. I mean, it seems good, but I don't necessarily like that. Um, 
<clears throat> Phantasmal image. Your mirror image summons one extra clone. Mirror image now reduces all damage taken by an additional 5%. Okay. I'll probably go with reactive barrier on that one. Volatile magic. Whenever a splinter is removed... Oh, wait. Oh, we... Okay. Whenever a splinter is removed or recalled, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Be a uh, more passive AoE. Ugh. Let me hop in this Q run sec. Keep going and then we can pause. Uh, a nerfing proficiency. Uh, each time you conjure a splinter, increase the damage of your next Ice Nova by 6%, stacking up to 30 times. So you get a big Ice Nova. Okay. Next up. Shifting Shards. Shifting Power fires a barrage of 8 splinters at random enemies. I'm going to be honest, guys. So far, I really don't like this. I'm not trying to be negative, but I, I, I genuinely think this looks not... I don't think this looks fun at all. It, 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 yeah. It's a lot of just like passive AOE damage you're not even going to think about or consider. It looks very boring. And I, like I said, I'm not trying to be negative. This is just my honest feedback. That's what I think. Uh, direct damage from splinters has a 5% chance to summon an icy comet. Oh god, not icy comet, man. Not icy comet. If you play mage, you know icy comet is just the most garbanzo thing in the universe. Like, icy comet needs to just not be a thing. Just delete icy comet. It is not fun. Nobody uses it. Nobody likes it. Please. Nobody likes it. It's like, sometimes what happens... And my, this is like, like I said, I'm not trying to be negative. This is just what I, this is my observation. Like sometimes there's something really unfun that nobody likes and they try to just repurpose it. It's like, okay, nobody's picking this. Nobody likes it. It's not working. Let's do it again. No, no, no. We don't want it again. We don't like it. Anyway, shifting power fires, barrages, force of will gain two critical strike chance and five critical strike damage. Splinter Storm. Whenever you have eight or more active embedded splinters, you automatically cast a Splinter Storm at your target. Recall all embedded splinters, dealing their remaining periodic damage instantly. After a brief delay, unleash a devastating barrage of splinters, dealing damage to your target for each splinter in the Splinter Storm. I, I'm going to be completely honest, guys. Like, my honest feedback is I don't like anything about this. I don't think anything is transformative. I don't think it has any interesting gameplay. I don't like it. That's my honest opinion. Maybe one of the worst ones I've seen. I don't like it even a little. Let's look at Monk. Well, just you see trees like, dude, dude. Have you did you guys see the arms warrior tree like the mountain thane? Like that shit was ridiculous. Mountain thane sounded freaking insane compared to what that was. Like that didn't that doesn't feel like it's anything. It's just a, a dot on your what you're already doing. You're not even gonna. I, I, uh, whatever. All right, next. Uh, please maximize the window. Uh, the thing is, my stupid face is gonna cover it. See, whatever. It's fine. All right, we'll maximize the window. We got Shadow Pan Brewmaster. This is a Shadow Pan is Brewmaster and Windwalker. All right, here we go. Overwhelming Flurry. Dealing damage equal to your maximum health generates a flurry charge. For each 400 energy you spend, unleash all flurry charges as flurry strikes, dealing physical damage per charge. Okay. Uh, the Pride of Pandaria. Flurry Strikes has a 15% chance to critically strike. High impact. Enemies who die within 5 seconds of being damaged by a Flurry Strike explode, dealing damage to uncontrolled enemies within 8 yards. Controlled Instinct. Striking the same target 5 times within 2 seconds grants 2% haste. Striking the same target five times within two seconds grants 2% haste. 
Multiple instances of this effect may overlap, stacking up to 10 times. Martial precision. Attacks ten, ten, penetrate 10% 10 of target's armor. We get armor pen. Uh, okay. Protect and serve. Your vivify always heals you for an additional 30% of its total value. Lead from the front. Lead from the front. Chi burst, chi wave, and expel harm now leech 20% of damage dealt. Now leech 20% of damage dealt. Okay. <clears throat> One versus many. Damage dealt by Fists of Fury and Keg Smash count as double towards Flurry Charge Generation. Fists of Fury damage increased by 10%. Whirling Steel. When you become injured, summon Whirling Steel, increasing your parry chance and avoidance by 15%. Oh god, they added Sparring back? Okay. Predictive training. When you dodge or parry an attack, reduce damage taken by 10% for the next 6 seconds. <laughs> Against all odds. Flurry strikes increase your agility by 1% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 20 times. You get 20% more agility. Okay. Efficient training. Energy spenders deal an additional 15% of damage. Every 50 energy spenders deal an additional 15% of damage. Okay. Every 50 energy spent reduces the cooldown of Storm Earth and Fire and Serenity and Weapons of Order. Vigilant Watch. Blackout Kick deals an additional 20% critical strike damage and increases the damage of your next flurry strike by 10%. Wisdom of the wall. Uh, wisdom of the wall. Every ten flurry strikes become infused with the wisdom of the wall. Wisdom of the wall. Your critical strikes deal an additional thirty percent damage. Your mastery effect is increased by twenty five percent. Versatility now also increases your dodge and critical strike chance by twenty five percent of the effect. Flurry strikes now deal additional shadow damage to all uncontrolled enemies. So my big issue with this stuff is it's just a bunch of like weak auras to track. I'm I'm going to be honest, I so far I don't like it because it's just going to be another one of those things where you need a weak aura to track it, to use it efficiently and you're not it doesn't really transform your gameplay much. It's just like it's a bunch of passive, I don't know. I don't like that one either. Okay, but we have another uh, monk one. So we'll see if this one, monk one's cool. So this is the second Windwalker monk one. Um, Conduit of the Celestials. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Celestial Conduit, a new ability, 1.5 minute cooldown. The August Celestials empower you, causing you to radiate nature damage onto enemies and healing onto up... Onto up to five injured allies within 20 yards over four seconds, split evenly among them. Healing and damage increased by 6% per enemy struck, up to 30%. You may move while channeling, but cast casting other healing or damaging spells cancels the effect. Okay. Um, temple training. We'll do Windwalker, because I care about Windwalker more. Uh, Fist of Fury, Spinning Crane Kick deals 10% more damage. Or, Teachings of the Monastery has a 15% chance to refund a charge when consumed. The damage of Tiger Palm is increased by 30%. Courage of the White Tiger. Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to cause Zwen to claw your target for physical damage. Healing and nearby enemies for 100% of the damage done. Chance is increased while invokes when the white tiger is active. Let me read that again. Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to cause Zwen to claw your target for physical damage. Healing and nearby ally for 100% of 
of the damage done. Okay. The Windwalker monks are going to heal. Passive healing. Okay. Uh, restore balance. Gain rushing jade wind while Zwen the white tiger is active. So you just get rushing jade wind. Or Yulon's knowledge. Rushing jade wind's duration is increased by four seconds and multiple uses may overlap. Interesting. Okay. Uh, consuming 30 chi causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, Strike of the Wind Lord, and Whirling Dragon Punch by 100% for 8 seconds. Like I said, it's another one of those things where you're going to need a weak aura to track how much chi you have. And if you don't, it's going to feel really weird. Like if you don't actually can actually easily track these like windows after 30 chi you can use all your cooldowns super fast it's gonna feel really weird right and i'm not like i'm not trying to just use like buzzwords like oh weak auras and passives and but that's really what it is you really are gonna need a bunch of weak aura it's like outlaw it's like what we just played with outlaw rogue it's like a bunch of stuff that's not easy to track that you're gonna have to just have a bunch of add-ons to do i think it just i don't i don't like it after Zwen assists you, your next blackout kick causes Nazawan to stomp at your target location, dealing damage to nearby enemies reduced beyond five targets. Okay. Flight of the Red Crane. Rushing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause Chi G to quickly rush to five char. I have Chi G? When the hell did I get. What is this? So I just have like all these pets? How do I even get all these pets? All right, so I guess I'm going to have Nazao and I'm going to have Chi G. Uh, Fortifying Brew grants you an absorb shield for 20%, 25% of your maximum health. You heal for 10% of your maximum health instantly when you activate Celestial Conduit and receive 15% less damage for its duration. Okay. Chi G Swiftness. Your movement speed is increased by 25% during Celestial Conda and three seconds afterwards. Inner Compass. You switch between alignments after an August Celestial Sis you, increasing your, cor your uh, corresponding secondary stat by 3%. Or casting Jade Fire Stomp increases the damage of your next Rising Sun Kick by 30%. Jesus. Or your next Vivify by 50%. Mistweaver only. Unity within. Celestial Conduit can be recast once during its duration to call upon all the August Celestials to assist you at 200... Jesus! Okay, so that's where it comes from. So during your Celestial Conduit, you can recast once to call upon all of the August Celestials to assist you at 200% effectiveness. Unity within is automatically cast when Celestial Conduit ends. So that's where you get all your freaking... That's sick. Okay. Uh, are there any that you guys like? Let's see here. Let's see. Affliction Destro. This one maybe is cool. Is Affliction Destro cool? This one is called Hell Caller. All right, here we go. This one is the Affliction Destro. So Affliction, you get Wither. So... Instead of Corruption, you get Wither, and instead of Immolate, you get Wither. Uh, bestows a Vile Malediction upon the target during the Sinew and Muscle of its host, burning the Sinew and Muscle of its host, dealing Shadow Flame damage. So you get a new Dot. Cool. So Warlocks, get a new Dot. Not a... Let's see what happens. Uh, shadow damage increased by 5%, Fire damage increased by 5%. Your damage abilities further corrupt enemies affected by, uh, affected by your Wither, increasing its stack by one. So you put up the Wither, and then more damage increases its stacks. Cool. Each time a uh, Wither incre uh, increases, it has a chance to become acute, dealing Shadow Flame damage to its host every one second until one stack remains. Wither will always become acute after reaching eight stacks, or when its host reaches 20% health. Uh, fire Critical Strike chance increased by 10%. Shadow Critical Strike chance increased by 10%. Okay. 
Uh, Mark of the Lagashi. Curse of Weakness now also applies Curse of Tongues. War of Enfeeblement. Enemies within 10 yards are affected by your Curse of Weakness and Curse of Tongues. Aura of Enfeeblement. Are you kidding me? Nobody, what are you doing? What are you saying? I've gone down this road, man. Aura, uh, listen. No one loves Aura of Enfeeblement more than me. It's one of the reasons why I won BlizzCon in 2012. But that shit is fraud, man. That is crazy. What? I am actually cannot believe that they're re-adding this again. That is insane. What? That one is the... That's the most egregious one we've seen so far. Okay, cool. I, not cool, actually. That is awful. I'm not gonna lie. Like, we've gone down this road. We know it's effed. Whatever. Okay, hateful rituals. Uh, Wither deals 100% increased damage, but its duration is 50% shorter. I actually can't believe this is still like how did this how did this happen? Uh, bleak heart tactics. Wither deals. <sighs> Wither uh, damage increased by 15%. When Wither gains a stack from Black and Soul, it has a chance to gain one additional stack. Okay. Zerm's resilience. When you consume a hellstone, you also restore 10% of your maximum health. A soul leech. Elhoff's design. Sacrifice 10% of your maximum health. Soul leech now absorbs an additional 15% of your maximum health. Cool. Mark of Xavius. Uh, Agony is damage increased by 10%. Agony is now a combo scale. Directly recasting Agony within two seconds applies Agony to one other nearby enemy. What? So you just... Agony, you don't even have to change targets, basically. They just put Agony on, okay. Call of the Week, casting Wither directly or refreshes, casting Wither directly or refreshing Wither with less than four seconds remaining causes Wither to gain three stacks. That's kind of cool. I, I like that, actually. Mark of Parathorn, uh, Black and Soul deals 5% increased damage per stack of Wither. Agony deals 10% uh, damage 10% faster. Wither deals damage 10% faster. Malevolence. Dark magic erupts from you and corrupts your soul for 20 seconds, causing enemies suffering your wither to take shadow flame damage and increases its stat count by three. While corrupted, your active withers are acute. Your haste is increased by 10% and Malefic Rapture grants one additional stack of wither to targets affected by unstable affliction. Destruction. While corrupted, your withers... Uh, your withers are acute and your haste is increased by 10% and your cast bolt grants one additional stack of wither. This one is a lot... I'm not going to lie. This one is a lot better. Like, this one's a lot better than the freaking shard thing. I, man, I'm so disappointed with the mage ones. I'm going to be honest. I'm so disappointed with the mage ones. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to look at this one. Oh, did you see? Uh, yeah, we saw a spell slinger. I don't like a single thing about spell slinger. Doesn't look cool at all. It should be called splinters, splinters, springer, whatever slinger. All right, here we go. All right, so apparently the warrior ones are really good. The the last warrior one was insane. So I'm I'm I'm. All right, so this is arms fury, slayer's dominance. Okay. Your attacks have a high chance to overwhelm your target's defenses and trigger a slaying slayer strike, dealing low damage and applying marks for execution, increasing the damage they take from your next execute by ten percent, stacked three times. That's kind of cool. So you're execute. You're gonna have big executes. That's kind of neat. Sudden death's chance to reset the cooldown of execute and make it usable on any target, regardless of health, is increased. Using Sudden Death accelerates your next Blade Storm, striking one additional time, maximum three. Blade Storm's total duration is unchanged. So you get better Blade Storms when you use Sudden Death. Your Blade Storm gets even stronger. 
uh, overwhelming blades. Each strike of blade storm applies overwhelm to all enemies affected, increasing damage taken by one percent for ten seconds. That's really good. Your blade storm makes you the blade storm is gonna be really bursty after you blade storm. It's gonna make it so your target takes more damage. Relentless pursuit charge removes all movement impairing effects and grants you seventy. What the fuck, bro? Charge removes all movement impairing effects and grants you 70% movement speed for three seconds? Hello? What is going on? Like, what? Dude, imagine a warrior charge blade storms you. Huh? Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a Beyblade zooming around. <laughs> All right, whatever, dude. The vicious agility. Heroic Leap reduces the cooldown of charge by five seconds. And charge reduces the cooldown of Heroic Leap. That one's good too, though. Vicious agility. Jesus, man. What is going on? All right. Death Drive. You heal for 50% of the damage dealt by sudden death. <laughs> okay. Slayer Reflexes. Slayer's Strikes has a chance to reset the cooldown of Bloodthirst and Overpower. Cooldown of Overpower reduced by 10%. Fury, cooldown of Bloodthirst reduced by 10%. Okay. Tunnel Vision. Your auto attack speed increases while you are in combat. Changing targets. Tunnel Vision. <laughs> All right, thrill of the Kill. Execute increases your auto attack speed for 10 seconds. All right. <laughs> Slay. Mark for execution increases the critical strike chance and critical strike damage of your next execute on the target by 5%. Overpower or Bloodthirst have a chance to cause your neck you to unleash a brief blade storm, striking all enemies around you. You can now use Pummel and Stormbolt while blade storming. <laughs> Yo, whoever made this, can you make the mage one, please? Please, man. Jesus, bro. Okay, Slayer's Focus. Overpower cooldown reduced by 10%. Uh, Bloodthirst cooldown reduced by 10%. Unrelenting Onslaught. When you execute a target that you've marked for execution, reduce the cooldown of Bladestorm by 5 seconds per stack of marked for execution. Wait, let me read this again. When you execute a target that you've marked for execution, you reduce the cooldown of Blade Storm by five seconds per stack of marked for execution and apply stacks of overwhelmed equal to the number of stacks of marked for execution the target had. So you get CDR on Blade Storm. This is insane. This one is actually good. Like, I don't think it's over, like this one I don't think is actually overly complicated. This is just fucking good. Like this just seems like, okay, they got some insane shit. I get splinters. I get a little splinter, bro. Like, honestly, my splinter is better just one shot. If my splinter is one shot, I won't be too mad. But like, dude, what? This actually looks fun. Like, here, here's my thing about the warrior ones so far. The warrior ones actually just look fun. It looks like you get some fun stuff. The mage ones don't look fun at all. The windwalker ones don't look fun at all. Warriors just seem like they're... Uh, what the fuck? Honestly, the Warlock ones look good, too. I, I do... I, I'm so disappointed with the Mage ones. Mm. Should we look at uh, Elemental Rest, though? All right, we'll look at Demon Hunter after this. All right, here we go. Uh... Call of the Ancestors. Primordial Wave calls an ancestor to your side. Oh, cool. Unleash Life calls an ancestor to your side. <laughs> nice. Your ancestor... Okay, what does this do? Whenever you cast a healing or damaging spell, the ancestor will cast a similar spell. Okay. Your ancestor spells are 20% more powerful. Ancestors have a 15% chance to call another ancestor when they expire. Okay. So you get like little trends. <laughs> you get little mirror images. Heed my call. Ancestors last an additional two seconds. Lava Burst 
has a cat. Labrador's cats have an 8% chance to call an ancestor. Oh my god! What is going on? More freaking pets healing! You're actually gonna summon Trents! They gave Trents to Resto Shamans! Like, if you just replace, like, listen to this. If you just replace Ancestor with Trent, let me reread it. Unleash Life calls a Trent to your side for six seconds. Whenever you cast a healing or damaging spell, the Trent will cast a similar spell. Your Trent's spells are 20% more powerful. Trent's have a 15% chance to call another Trent when they expire. Like, Jesus! Trent's last an additional two seconds. Riptide has a 15% chance to call an additional Trent. Riptide gains an additional charge and heals for 5% more. When, when your Trent is called, they reduce the cooldown of Riptide. Increasing your maximum mana, increase your maximum Mailstorm. Using spells uh, with a cast time, increase the duration of Spirit Walker's Grace and a Spirit Walker's Aegis by one second, up to a maximum of four seconds. Okay. Uh, Earth Shield has, has an additional three charges and heals you for 25% more. That's really good. Reduces the cooldown of Nature's Guardian by 10 seconds. It causes you to heal an additional 5% of your health. Great. Restoration increases the healing uh, done by Healing Wave, Healing Surge, Wellspring by 8%. Okay. Restoration, when a Trent expires, they cast Hydro Bubble on a nearby ally. Hydro Bubble. Surrounds your target with a protective water bubble for 10 seconds. The shield absorbs incoming damage, but the um, absorb amount decays fully over its duration. Okay. Ancestral Swiftness. Your next healing and damaging spell within 10 seconds is instant. It deals 10% more damage and healing. If you know Nature's Swiftness, it is replaced by Ancestral Swiftness and causes your Ancestral Swiftness to call a Trent to your side. Okay, this actually seems fucking good too. It seems good as well. Like, maybe not the most fun, but good. And also, why are shamans getting trends? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here? All right. We'll save the best for last. Probably Demon Hunter. That's Beastmaster. We'll check that one out after this. Devastation Preservation. We'll check that one out too. Feral Guardian. Let's see the Demon Hunter one. I, I want to see the Demon Hunter one. All right, here we go. Demon Hunters. Let's go. Aldraki Reaver. Okay, this one looks complicated. You guys ready for this? Here we go. Consuming three Havoc or 20... Okay, for Havoc, consuming three Soul Fragments. We're just going to read this from a Havoc point of view, Okay. Consuming three soul fragments allows you to cast Reaver's Glaive. Reaver's Glaive replaces Throw Glaive. Throw a Glaive enhanced with the essence of consumed souls at your target, dealing physical damage and ricocheting to two additional targets for additional damage. Begins a well-practiced pattern of Glaive work, enhancing your next Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. Shear and Soul Cleave. Oh, okay, for Havoc, I understand. Chaos Strike, Shear, and Fracture applies Reaver's Mark, which causes the target to take 15% increased damage. Fifteen percent? Blade Dance and Soul Cleave deals three percent three additional glaive slashes to nearby targets for additional damage. That is a storybook. Jeez. Okay, let's keep going. So just remember, big thing is Reaver's Glaive replaces Throw's Glaive. It's a glaive that does more damage, makes your abilities better, and makes the target take more damage. Uh, keen Engagement. Reaver's Glaive generates 20 Fury. Okay. Preemptive Strike. Throw Glaive deals damage. Yo, Theo, thanks so much, bro. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Theo. Throw Glaive deals damage to enemies near its initial target. Thanks for the content. I appreciate you, man. Seriously, thank you so much. Invasive action. Vengeful Retreat can now be cast a second time within three seconds. Oh, great. More immunities. Like, Jesus. Oh, yeah, Bro, what? Vengeful Retreat resets the cooldown of Fellblade. 
Glimpsing here? Glimpsing again? <laughs> I glimpse, I glimpse again? Nice. <laughs> Dude, what? Alright, when in, uh, Incisive Blade, when Enhanced, Chaos Strike and Soul Cleave deal 30% more damage. Okie dokie. Uh, the second Enhanced ability in a pattern shatters an additional Soul Fragment. Okay. Army onto oneself. Fell Blade surrounds you with a Blade Ward, reducing physical damage taken by 10%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So your mobility gives you 10% damage reduction. Great. All right, just so we know. Incorruptible Spirit. Consuming a Soul Fragment also heals you for an additional 15% over time. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wounded Quarry. While Reva's Mark is on your target, melee attacks have a chance to strike with an additional Glaive Slash for damage and shatter a soul. While Reaver's Mark is on your target, melee attacks have a chance to strike with an additional Glaive Slash. Okay. Casting an enhanced ability reduces the remaining cooldown of the hunt. Each successive enhanced ability deals 10% increased damage. The effect of the second enhancement is increased by 100%. So, <clears throat> when you use Chaos Strike first, and then a Blade Dance, your Blade Dance does 100% extra damage? Yeah, that doesn't seem like it'll be a problem. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem at all. That'll be totally fine. Cool. Uh, Warblade's Hunger. Consuming a Soul Fragment causes your next Chaos Strike, Sheared or Fracture to deal bonus damage. Thrill of the fight. After consuming both enhancements, gain Thrill of the fight, increasing your attack speed by 15% for 5 seconds and causing your next ability to deal 30% increased damage and healing. 30%! Jesus. So basically, the way I understand this is you're going to use your Reaver's Glaive. After you use your Reaver's Glaive, you're going to have an Enhanced Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. And depending on the order you use them, the second ability you use, so if you Chaos Strike and then Blade Dance, that Blade Dance does 100% extra damage. And after you use your little combo, you get increased attack speed by 15%, and it causes your next ability, like an Eye Beam, to deal 30% more damage. I mean, I'm going to be honest, at least this, I mean, this sounds fucking insane, but at least it sounds fun. Like, I, I'm jealous of, like, okay, like when I'm reading this, I'm like, this is nuts. But I'm also like, okay, this is what it should be. Like, the trees should at least be interesting. The mage ones are so ma sad, man. Oh, no. Am I, guys, am I alone on this? Like, I'm really not trying to be a crybaby pee pants, but are the mage ones good or bad? Like, do they look fun? Because the so far, the warriors and demon hunters look insane. They look really cool and awesome. The mage ones look so boring. Like, really boring. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, we're getting Death Knights one too. I haven't looked at the Death Knights one. Uh, I don't really know that much about Death Knights, but let's check it out. Okay. Rider of the Apocalypse. That just sounds badass, to be honest. Spending Ruins has a chance to call forth the aid of a horseman. Dude. I also just have to say, I feel like we're getting way too many NPCs. Like, are you guys getting that same vibe? I feel like there's way too many, like, NPCs that are being spawned. Am I crazy? There's... The pets, we're doubling down on AI, man. And pets. Okay. Spending Runes has a chance to call forth the aid of a horseman. Cast Death and Decay... So you can get either Morgrain, White Mane, Trollbane, or Naz Nazgrim. Okay, so one gives you 5% strength. One casts Chains of Ice on your target and increases the damage they take by 5%. One casts Undeath, dealing Shadow Frost damage. Putting up a big dot. Okay. And one casts Death and Decay. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, let's keep going. On a pale horse. While outdoors, you are able to mount your death charger in combat. While outdoors, you are able to mount your death charger in combat. Wait, is that is is an arena outdoors? Okie dokie. I think it is. So, oh my god. So they can mount in combat. <laughs> or death's charge. Call upon a death charger to break free of movement impairing effects. For 10 seconds, while upon your death charger, your movement speed is increased by 100%. You cannot be slowed and you are immune... Why are melee getting more mobility? Like, way more. Why? I don't understand. Dude, why are melee getting so much mobility? This is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe it. What? Okay, more grains of might. Your damage is increased by 5%, and you gain the benefits of your death and decay while inside Morgan's death and decay. Okay, cool. Horseman's aid. While at your aid, the horseman will occasionally cast anti-magic shell on you and themselves. Like, bro, what? What are we saying? Like, what the hell? is going on man <clears throat> pact of the apocalypse when you take damage five percent of the damage when you take damage five percent of the damage is redirected to each active horseman i think the horseman's aid is bullshit you get a free anti-magic shell <laughs> I, I dude okay white man's famine when your disease deal damage to an enemy affected by un undeath it gains another stack Additionally, when Undeath deals damage, it infects another nearby enemy. <laughs> if an enemy dies while Nazgrim is active, the strength of Apocalyptic Conquest is increased. Additionally, each rune you spend increases its value. Okay. Trollbane's Icy Fury. When you obliterate or scourge strike a target affected by Trollbane's Chains of Ice, it shatters, dealing Shadow Frost damage to nearby enemies and slowing them. So it's AoE slow and damage. All right, let's keep going. The damage of your diseases, frost strike, and death coal are increased. Okay. Every 50 runic power you spend extends the duration of horsemen's aid. Okay. While you have two or more horsemen aiding you. Wait, you can have... Wait a minute. You can have more than one horseman? Oh my god. <laughs> All right. While you have two or more horsemen uh, aiding you, your runic power abilities deal 20% increased damage and have 10% chance to refund a ruin. The cooldown of Horn of Winter and Unholy Blight is reduced by 15 seconds, and Death and Decay is reduced by 10 seconds. Apocalypse Now. Army of the Dead in Frostum's Fury call all four horsemen to your aid. <laughs> like I said, if I was a DK, I would be stoked. Like, if you're a DK, good for you. For everyone else, middle finger. <laughs> like, <laughs> what am I reading? Dude, please. Whoever's making these melee, can you do the caster ones too? This is the most insane thing. Like, the warrior, demon hunter, and DK ones are insanely good. I literally put shards on people. My abilities put a little dot on them. Like, I've been waiting for Spellslinger. Spellslinger literally puts little... You put icicles. You get more icicles. What are we talking about? What are we saying? All right, should we look at the Frost Blood DK one? DK, literal four horsemen of the apocalypse. Mages, little splinter peepees. Yeah, basically, holy mother. All right, let's watch the let's see, Frost Blood Death Knight. Here we go. All right, new ability. Or active ability. 
One minute cooldown. Reaper's Mark. Viciously slice into the soul of your enemies, dealing Shadow Frost damage and applying Reaper's Mark. Each time you deal Shadow or Frost damage, add a stack of Reaper's Mark. After 12 seconds or reaching 40 stacks, the Mark explodes, dealing damage per stack. Reaper's Mark travels to an unmarked uh, enemy near... Reaper's Mark travels to an unmarked enemy nearby if the target dies or explodes below 30% health when there are no enemies to travel to. The explosion cannot occur again on a target for three minutes. Okay. Reaper's Mark unleashes a dark wave towards your target and back, dealing Shadow Frost damage both ways to all enemies caught in its path. Wave of Souls Critical Strike causes enemies to take 5% increased frost damage for 15 seconds, stacking up to two times, and the wave back is always a critical strike. <clears throat> Your Frost Fever has a chance to deal 30% increased Shadow Frost damage. Yo, HS Bud, thanks for the sub, bro. Shadow Frost damage applies double stacks to Reaper's Mark and quadruple stacks when it is a critical strike. Rhyme Empowered Howling Blast deals Shadow Frost damage. Okay, a Death's Bargain. When you suffer a damaging effect equal to 25% of your maximum health, you instantly cast Death Pack at 50% effectiveness. When you suffer a damaging effect equal to 25% of your maximum health, you instantly cast Death Pact. Okay, when a Reaper's Mark explodes, the cooldown of this effect and Death Pack are reduced by five seconds. Okay, it's like a cheat death. <laughs> <clears throat> kind of. Yo, Zarov, thank you for the prime. Ruined carved plates. Each ruin spent reduces the magic damage you take by 2%, and each ruin generated reduces the physical damage you take by 2%. So that's insane. They're going to have 10% physical and magic damage reduction permanently. Okay. Uh, Dark Talon. While Icy Talon is active, your runic power spending abilities deal Shadow Frost damage. Consuming Killing Machine or Rhyme has a 20% chance to increase the maximum stacks of an Icy Talon's by one up to two times, or Wither Away, Frost Fever deals its damage in half the duration, and a second scythe of Exterminant applies Frost Fever. Okay, I don't really know. Uh, I don't know if this is good or not. Doesn't sound that insane, but okay, let's keep going. Reaper's Mark costs. Uh, Reaper's Mark cost is reduced by one ruin and its cooldown is reduced by 50%. Painful Death, Reaper's Mark now explodes at 50 stacks and the first Scythe of Exterminate has a 100% increased chance to apply Reaper's Mark. Reduces the cooldown of Lichborn and Raise the Dead by 30 seconds, expelling. When an enemy deals direct damage to your anti-magic shell, their cast speed is reduced. Oh, great. Lovely. Exterminate. After Reaper's Mark explodes, your next Marl Rend or Obliterate costs no rune and summons two Scythes to strike your enemy. The first Scythe strikes your target for physical damage, has a 15% chance to apply Reaper's Mark, and the second Scythe strikes all enemies around you dealing Shadow Frost damage. Dude. Okay, that, I mean, I don't really know. That one sounds good. Doesn't sound as good as this one, though. Rider of the Apocalypse sounds way crazier. Um, holy shit. Uh, should we look at the feral? What do you guys want to see next? Feral or devastation? I'll let you choose. Feral or devastation next? Uh, a lot of you guys want feral. We'll do that. Feral guardian. Massive attack. I love massive attack. Great band, by the way. Your auto attacks have a chance to make your next ferocious bite become a massive attack. Shit. That sounds cool. Finishing move that slashes through your target in a wide arc, dealing physical damage per combo point to your target and consuming up to 25 uh, additional energy to increase that damage by up to 100%. That sounds fucked. Hits all other enemies in front of you for reduced damage per combo point spent. Cool. I mean, that sounds bad. Like, that sounds great. Your auto attacks... Have a chance to make your next Ferocious Bite become a massive attack, so keep that in mind. Your maximum energy and rage are increased by 20%. Friends of Regeneration also increases your maximum health by 
Dreadful Wound. Massive attack also inflicts a bleed that causes additional damage over six seconds and saps its victim strength, reducing damage they deal to you. <laughs> dreadful Wound is not affected by Circle of Life and Death. Feral. If a Dreadful Wound benefiting Tiger Sphere is reapplied, the new Dreadful Wound deals damage as if Tiger Sphere was active. Boulders, thank you for the prime, brother. Much love, bro. Bestial Strength. Ferocious Bite damage increased by 5% and Primal Wrath direct damage increased by 100%. First choice knows. Ruthless Aggression. Massive Attack increases your auto attack speed by 20%. Killing Strikes. Massive Attack increases your agility by 5% and the armor granted by Iron Fur by 20%. Okay. Feral, your first Tiger's Fury after entering combat makes your next Ferocious Bite become a massive attack. So you get it guaranteed. Tax Endurance. Stampeding Roar's duration is increased by 25%. Wild Shape Mastery. Uh, Iron Fur and Frenzy Regeneration. Persistent Cat Form. That's kind of cool. When transforming from bear to cat form, you retain 80% of your bear form armor. What the frick? When you... That's crazy. So you can frenzied regen and bear and immediately go back into cat form and you keep the armor for six seconds. For six seconds after entering bear form, you heal for 10% of damage taken over eight seconds. What? After six seconds, for six seconds after entering bear form, you heal for 10% of the damage taken over eight seconds. That's insanely good. Okay. Uh, here we go. Empowered shapeshifting. Frenzy regeneration can be cast in cat form. What? Bear form reduces magic damage taken by 4%. What is going on? Feral. Shred and swipe grant Ursine potential. Or seen potential. When you have eight stacks, the next time you transform into bear, your next mangler swipe deals 100% increased damage and generates 15 extra rage. Uh, aggravating wounds. Every finishing move, shred, thrash, or swipe, you cast extended duration of your dreadful wounds by four seconds, up to six additional seconds. Strike from the heart, shred, uh, swipe, mangle. Angle's critical strike chance and critical strike damage are increased. Okay, the cooldown of Frenzy, Feral Frenzy is reduced by five seconds. Okay. Claw Rampage. During Berserk, Shred Swipe and Thrash have a 25% uh, chance to make your next Ferocious Bite become a massive attack. <laughs> this one seems really good. I'm not going to lie. This seems good. Like, if I was a Feral Druid reading this, I'd be like, okay, we're getting some solid shit. Like, they're getting a lot more tankiness and just a lot more damage, it seems like. Cool. I mean, I mean, whatever. Some weird... I, I don't really like the idea that you can use frenzied regen in cap form, but I don't know, whatever. Uh, Cool. Let's take a look at this one. We've got Devastation Preservation. Here we go. Are you ready? We got a new ability. 20 second cooldown. Engulf your target in Dragon Flame. Damaging or healing them for each of your... Uh, for each... Damaging or healing them. For each of your periodic effects on the target, the effectiveness is increased by 50%. Jesus. Okay. So, engulf your target in Dragon Flame. Damage or healing them. For each of your periodic effects on the target. So, for... I guess you're going to do a lot more healing with engulf? Mud, are you happy, bro? Because, uh, yep. 20 second cooldown. Yeah, it seems really strong. Okay, let's see what happens. Hover and deep breath travel 50% faster and hover travels 50% further. Tail swipe and wing buffet scorches enemies. Tail swipe and wing buffet scorches enemies and blinds them with ash, causing their attacks to miss. Oh my god. What? Dude, they gave a they gave them searing glare. You have two charges of instant cast Searing Glare. That's fucking insane. What? You have two charges of Searing Glare that are instant cast. Undispellable too, I bet, Born Good. Cool. 
When golf causes fire breath or dream breath to spread to a nearby target, if no valid targets are present, its duration is refreshed. In Kindle, Essence abilities are enhanced with flame, dealing 20% of healing or damage done as fire. Critical strike chance against targets above 50% health is increased. You get free crit when people are with high health. Burning Adrenaline. Engulf quickens your pulse, reducing the cast time of your next spells by 30%, stacks up to two charges. Fan the Flames. Engulf reignites in Kindle, extending its duration and effectiveness by 25%. Expanded Lungs. Fire breath damage over time is increased by 20%. Preservation. Dream Breath heal over time is increased by 20%. Titanic Precision. Living Flame. Reversion, Azure Strike, Critical Strikes have a 100% increased chance to trigger Essence Burst. Wait, what? Living Flame? Oh, 100% increased chance. Okay, so it's not, you, do, you don't have a 100% chance, you just double your chance. Uh, Engulf. Engulf uh, gains one additional charge and deals 20% increased damage and healing. Okay. It has such a short cooldown already, that's crazy. It has a 20 second cooldown, two charges. It's going to be up the whole game. Renewing Blaze also applies to one nearby injured ally. What? Renewing Blaze applies to one injured ally? Okay. Your wounds have a small chance to cauterize, healing you for 30% of the damage taken. It occurs more often from attacks that deal high damage. I don't like that at all, man. What are you talking about? That's so, like... That, that kind of passive healing, I just hate that stuff. Your wounds have a small chance to cauterize, healing you for 30% of the damage taken. Wow. Occurs more often from attacks that deal high damage. I don't know what that means. Engulf consumes 8 seconds of fire breath from the target, detonating it and damaging all nearby targets equal to 300% of the amount consumed. <laughs> Okie doke. En Engulf consumes 8 seconds of dream breath from the target. Okay, this one seems really good. This one seems really, 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 really good as well. So yeah, I guess if you're if you're a devastation evoker, congratulations. Uh, honestly, going through these, the biggest winners, I think. So if we just, uh, I didn't actually read the hunter one. I want to read that one. Uh, Route of the Apocalypse is completely wild, insane. Deathbringer, I think, seems okay. I don't know. Uh, the Reaver one seems crazy. Uh, Druid of the Claw seems crazy. Uh, Flame Shaper seems crazy. Pack Leader, I haven't looked at that one yet. Uh, Spell Slinger, absolute garbanzo. I'm not. I genuinely believe Spellslinger is the worst one that I've seen. Um, yeah, okay. Anyways, Spellslinger, don't like them. And keep going. Uh, Shadow Pan, didn't like that one very much. Conduit of the Celestials, eh. Didn't excite me that much. Farseer, this is the Trent one for Ellie Shaman. Uh, Hellcaller seems cool. The Druid one seems cool. Slayer seems insane. Warriors won the biggest lottery ever. Whoever's doing the Warrior Tree, please do the Mage one too. Um, let's see here. Deathbringer Keystone. Okay, so we should look at the Hunter one. I wanted to look at that one really quick. Uh, that's the last one. We'll look at the Hunter one, and that's the last one we need to take a look at. Uh, where is it? Pack Leader. Here we go. Ready? Uh, vicious Hunt. Kill Command prepares you to viciously attack in a coordin in coordination with your pet, dealing additional physical damage with your next Kill Command. Okay, so kill command makes your next kill command do more damage. Uh, pack coordination. Attacking with Vicious Hunt instructs your pet to strike with their basic attack alongside your next barb shot. Howl of the pack. Your pet's basic attacks, critical strike, increase your critical strike damage by 5% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Wild attacks. Every third basic attack is guaranteed critical strike with damage further increased by critical strike chance. So far, not that interesting. Uh, Den recovery. Aspect of the turtle. Survival of the fittest. Men pet. Heal the target for 20% of their maximum health over 4 seconds. Duration increased by one, 1 second when healing a target under 50% maximum health. That's really good. Uh, aspect of the cheetah now increases movement speed by 15% for another 8 seconds. Corner prey. Disengage, disengage increases the range of all your attacks. Eh. Frenzy Terror, your pet's basic attacks have a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of Kill Command and cause Kill Command to strike an additional 30% damage. Uh, covering Fire, Kill Command increases the duration of Beast Cleave by one second. 
Wildfire Bomb reduces the cooldown of Carver Butchery. Scattered Prey. Carver Butchery increases the damage of your next Carver Butchery. I don't even know what that is. Carver Butchery, what the heck? I don't know what that is. Call the Herd. Kill Shot deals an additional 30% damage over 5 seconds and increases bleed damage. Yeah, the BM Hunter mains. Yes, dude, these towns are sick. Now we can spam Kill Command even more. Yeah, these ones don't seem that fun. This seems like Spell Slinger. Uh, okay. Uh, consuming Frenzy Terror has a 50% chance to make your next Raptor Strike or Mongoose free and deal 30% increased damage. Okay. Coordinate Assault calls, uh, calls on the pack, summoning a pet from your stable. Pack Assault, Vicious Hunt, and Pack Coordination now stack and apply twice. Like, these could be good, but disappointing. Not very fun. Not very fun. So, um, some of these, the, like, my honest assessment is some of these are really good, absurdly strong, crazy, 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 crazy. The thing that I don't like for some of them is it's just a bunch of passives you're not even going to think about. You're not going to feel in your gameplay. It doesn't seem exciting. Nothing's transformative. That's like Spell Slinger. Definitely don't like it. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then you have some of them that are just, they seem crazy. Like the warrior ones, if I was a warrior, I would be so excited for the next expansion. I'd be like, okay, we're getting so much cool shit. Everything feels better. We're getting more mobility. We're getting more burst damage. We're getting new abilities. Our utility is getting better, getting like crazy shit, like five second shockwave. Like great. As a mage, I'm like, what? Splinter storm? Seriously? Splintering sorcery? What are we saying? Yeah, I don't I don't really know. I don't All right. I yeah. I we'll see what happens, but yeah. Some of them are cool. 